So you're planning a trip to Kosovo, well you've come to the right place. In this video I'm going to give you some top tips that you should know before you enter its borders. So grab yourself a cup of tea and these are the 6 things I wish I knew before visiting Kosovo. Let's not waste any time, so number 1, do you do a day trip? or do you spend the night? Well, I'm going to say spend the night. Uh, the reason I say this is Prizren, which is the most touristy town, gets very, very busy of day trippers in the day. So if you stay a night, you can see what the town is like in the evenings when it's much, much quieter. It does get a lot of day trippers from uh, Macedonia and Albania. So I'd recommend staying a night literally just to see what the town's like when it's a lot more peaceful and more quiet. Unfortunately, I just spent a day there, so I only saw it when it was really busy. So in my opinion, stay the extra night. Number two, and that's the country felt very safe. Now I only went to two cities in Pristina and Prizren, but in the south of Kosovo, I didn't feel unsafe at all. Don't be alarmed if you see some military vehicles uh, on the roads, for example, some UN peacekeepers. That's kind of normal life there. But we didn't feel in danger at all. The people were very friendly and it was kind of a very chilled atmosphere. However, I wouldn't advise going to the northern border with Serbia. I heard it's quite hard to get through. Uh, so if you are coming into Kosovo, make sure you come from any of its other surrounding countries, neighbouring countries and not Serbia. Number three is to make sure you visit the countryside as well as the cities. Now, if you are spending one night in the country, which is probably what I'd recommend, make sure you spend a few hours going out of the cities. It's got loads of monasteries. In fact, the whole reason why Serbia, well, one of the reasons why Serbia wants uh, Kosovo as part of its territory is because it's the holy land of the area. There's loads of different cute monasteries in the hills. Uh, so I'd recommend visiting at least one of them, which you can do on day trips, either with your hostel or on Get Your Guide. Uh, I'd recommend doing this because the cities, even though they are, uh, even though I really enjoyed visiting them, there's nothing quite like getting out into the country and seeing what the local life is really like. Uh, and one of the most, well, one of the charms of the Balkans is the nature. So I'd definitely recommend getting out of the cities just for a few hours to get a, get a sense of some of the monasteries. Number four, and that's Kosovo is surprisingly affordable, even in comparison to Macedonia and Albania. I'd recommend you budget only about 25 euros per day. And yes, they use euros. Uh, they don't have their own local currency. Uh, and so the cafes, relatively cheap. All the museums have very low entry fees. And the buses, I think it costs about €2.50 Euros to get in between cities. So it's not going to cost you a lot at all. The hostels are also generally around €13 Euros per night. Uh, even though in the more touristy areas, for example, in the centre of Prizren, prices are a little bit higher, you can still easily stay uh, in the €25 Euros a day. Uh, so budget less than you might for other Balkan countries. Number five, when do I go to Kosovo? Well, in the winter, it does get very, very cold. And in the summer, it's fairly warm. We went uh, in July uh, and it was pretty hot. However, I'd actually recommend you try and come in February time, 17th of February to be precise, which is Independence Day. And they have a huge celebration there. And I actually want to go back just to see what Independence Day is like there. Uh, so in 2008, they broke away or they declared independence from Serbia. Uh, so if you can go during the Independence Day celebrations, wow, that will be an amazing experience. Uh, going during the summer, again, like I said earlier, it does get very busy, so bear that in mind. Uh, however, there's no wrong time to visit the country. Uh, in the winter, you get the snow. In the summer, you get the warm temperatures. And my final tip is to speak to as many locals as possible. Now, you really should do this anyway, but in Kosovo, it's so important because it's such a big blend. It's such a big mix of cultures. You've got a lot of Albanians living there. You've got a lot of uh, Macedonians living there. So there's a huge blend of history. So if you speak to the locals, you get a sense of what it's like to live in a country that's the youngest uh, in Europe and has lived in recent memory through big wars uh, with Serbia. So I'd recommend you just speak to as many people. They're very, very friendly, warm and welcoming. They have a very Albanian culture uh, and th their culture very much is warm and welcoming. So they'll happily speak to you about uh, kind of what it's like to live in the country. Learn as much as possible because it really is a fascinating country to visit. So those were the six things I wish I knew before visiting Kosovo as I just finished my cup of tea. Uh, if you want to see more videos from the Balkans, if you're planning a backpacking trip, uh, they are on my channel as I just built some of the tea on the floor. Uh, please do subscribe as you got all of this for free and I'll see you for another video soon.